Hi, I'm Jerry Miles. Welcome to my studio. I'm an artist who specialises in landscape and underwater subjects, in acrylics and in oils. I prefer to work on a firm painting surface and in this video I'd like to show you how I make my own painting boards which have a unique rough textured surface that suits my style of painting. Now once I've established the composition for the painting and I know the height to width ratio I can then scale that up to determine what size of board that I'm going to need. It takes me about a day to make a painting board but after that time it's immediately ready for painting. And of course during the day there are opportunities to do other things during the drying times within that process. So let's get started. There are three basic elements in making my painting boards. The first is an MDF panel, the second is Egyptian muslin and the third white wood glue, PVA glue. We'll look more closely at the MDF panel. I use a 12 mm thick board for paintings up to 120 cm square, that's 4 feet square. For smaller boards, say 45 cm square, that's 18 inches square, then I use a 9 mm. And for the panels that I take out into the field for sketching, I use a 4 mm board because they're lightweight. The board itself has been cut to size, the edges have been sanded, and it's been wiped down with a damp cloth to remove all dust. This is the high quality Egyptian muslin, which is a very thin cloth with an open weave. The muslin doesn't require to have any strength since it's going to be bonded to the MDF panel. Its purpose is to provide a tooth for the painting surface. This is the white wood glue. Don't be put off by the writing on the front. I live in the Netherlands, so. Uh, this says Houtlime, which in Dutch simply means wood glue. It's a PVA, which is a polyvinyl acetate. It's an emulsion and can be further diluted by water. Suitable for bonding wood, paper and cloth. I use a plinth to lay the board on. This one's made out of scrap material, but you could equally use a cardboard box filled up with newspapers and magazines or even a stack of old books would serve the purpose. And we lay the board on the top so that it overlaps on all sides. Having cut the muslin to size, allowing an overlap on all sides of about 50 millimeters or 2 inches, it's draped over the board like a tablecloth. I'm now going to stretch the muslin over the board using masking tape, sometimes referred to as drafting tape. <coughs> I want to re-emphasize that uh, the overlap of the muslin from the board shouldn't be more than about 50 millimeters or a couple of inches, otherwise it makes it a little more difficult. Let's take a strip of tape, we begin in the middle of the longest side and just tape it underneath. Then we go to the middle of the opposite, the longer side. We put the muslin under a little tension, not too much. The idea is not to distort it. And then to the middle of the shortest side. In the middle of the opposite short side, again putting a little tension on, not too much. So we end up with two lines of stretch down the middle of the board in both directions. Next I go methodically around the board, fixing tape to a point midway 
between the middle of the board and the corner. So put the tape on the cloth, use the left hand to pull it towards the, the corner of the board and then a little tension and stick it underneath. Now we can work round the whole of the board putting those quarter points in. When we get to the corners, exactly the same principle. A little bit of tension and stick the flap under the board. And then we do the same on the other side. A little bit of tension there and stick it on. Now that the muslin is neatly stretched across the board, I can glue it down. The wood glue, PVA glue I supplied, is too thick and viscous for that purpose, so I mix two parts glue with one part water. That gives it a very weak glue mixture, but plenty strong enough for the purpose of gluing down the muslin. So we take a good liberal amount of glue, we start in one corner, and brush out towards the edges, soaking the cloth when the glue goes through the open weave into the board below. I work away always towards the edges because I don't want the glue to get onto the edges on the side. It makes it more difficult to trim off the muslin when we're finished. This technique has the French name marouflage. It's very much like silkscreen printing, but instead of ink, I'm squeezing the glue through the fabric into the board. This glue is serving two purposes. Not only bonding the muslin onto the board, but when dry, it forms an impervious screen so that any impurities in the board won't come through and leach out into the oil or acrylic paintings in the final painting. Good. Having now bonded the muslin to the board, we come to one of those rest periods that I talked about earlier, where we can go away and do something else. I leave it for about an hour, an hour and a half. Once dry, I remove the tape from the back and trim off the excess muslin using a sharp modelling knife. Since none of the glue has gone over the edge of the board, the trimming comes away very cleanly. Muslin has been trimmed off and the muslin is bonded very firmly and well onto the board itself. If you remember I said I want all sides of the board sealed so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to use a domestic uh, matte vinyl paint and I usually have um, a neutral colour, a grey um, or an earth colour for the back and the sides. And um, this one's called clay, so you can't get much more earthy than that. And what we do is we simply paint the back and the sides to make sure that they are also sealed against damp and ingress of any moisture, taking care that the edges also get a good coating of paint. With the back and edges sealed we can now return to the painting surface. And this is now going to be painted with gesso. Now when I'm giving demonstrations mostly people like to know what materials I'm using. So this gesso is by the Swiss company Lascau and it's artist quality and I find it extremely good. Okay. 
and we work this into the surface of the painting board. Again, working out towards the edges. I made a neat job of painting those edges. We don't want to then mar them with white paint. Gradually work our way across the whole board, working the paint well into the weave of the muslin. So this is it, the completed painting board. And despite all the handling with glue and paints on the back and the front and the sides, it still remains perfectly flat and non-distorted. And because it's now sealed on all sides, it'll stay that way. Now, if you're happy with painting on this fine tooth surface, then the board is finished and you can paint away to your heart's content. But as I said in the beginning, I like a flat surface, yes, but I also like to have a rough, random texture which I can interact with. So if you're intrigued to see how I achieve that, stay with me. I create my paintings with a pristine white surround that eventually becomes an integral part of the frame. This isolates the painting from its surroundings and enhances the colours, very much as you would view paintings on the pages of an art book. It's a question of taste, but that's the way I like it. The area of the white border has been taped off with masking tape, and of course, in sizing the painting board, I've taken the width of this border into account. Now I'm going to apply that rough random texture that I've been talking about. And to do that, I'm going to use an acrylic modeling paste. This is from that same Swiss company, uh, Lascaux, Modeling Paste A Natural. That's a smooth paste and suits my purpose. They also do modeling paste B and C, but they become more granular. And I'm going to apply it using a decorator's round brush with a fairly stiff bristle because I want the brush strokes to show in the uh, texture of the board. Obviously with a modelling paste you can create any texture you like. But the one that I prefer and the one that I've developed over the years is a texture where I use more of a wrist action much as you might use if you were painting skies or trees or any other detail on your painting. And I use fairly short strokes. Use plenty of plenty of paste because I want that those brush strokes to be showing and, and to be part of the painting. Now this is very much like handwriting, so everybody's boards will be different. Now hopefully by shining a light across the board, you can see more clearly the texture that I'm creating. You'll also see that the texture of the muslin still forms a part of this overall texture that I'm creating. Now you'll notice that I'm painting over the edge of the tape and this uh, thickness of paint and the painting itself when it's finished once I take the tape off then it leaves a ridge and underneath the tape of course will be the pristine white muslin painted with gesso that gives that uh, nice contrast as part of the frame. This surface is very suitable for dry brush techniques such as scumbling and creating broken edges and by a subtle use of the side of the brush details such as foliage, grass, cloud effects etc can be achieved without too much labouring. The board is now ready for painting. 
I've given it a last coating of white gesso in order to improve the absorbency of the painting surface. Sometimes I will mix colour into the gesso to a mid-tone, either a cool grey or a warm grey or maybe a tertiary, that suits the mood of the painting. This board has been dimensioned specifically for an underwater painting that I will give as a demonstration later in the series. Well, I hope you found this video useful and interesting. It results from many years of experimenting with different kinds of materials and finishes. I have acrylic and oil paintings on boards of this type that are 30 to 40 years old. And the boards are still sound and the paintings are as fresh as the day they were painted. I've enjoyed talking to you. Thanks for listening.